Before beginning, wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Non-sterile gloves are required during phlebotomy and intravenous cannulation. Position the patient supine on the stretcher and arrange all equipment on a bedside table within easy reach. If possible, you should try to be seated during the procedure. Hang the bag of intravenous fluid on a pole and check the fluid to be administered for contents and expiration date. Next, attach the intravenous tubing. Remove the plug and insert the spike from the tubing into the bag. Squeeze the drip chamber on the tubing until it is filled halfway with fluid. Flush the air from the intravenous tubing by opening the wheel clamp and allow fluid to flow throughout the tubing. When the tubing has been fully flushed, close the wheel clamp completely. If phlebotomy is to be performed during the cannulation, attach the appropriate adapter to the vacutainer holder and collect the required specimen tubes. Place a tourniquet 5 to 10 centimeters proximal to the anticipated cannulation site. First, wrap the tourniquet around the arm and then tuck a loop of one end of the tourniquet under the other. The tail of the loop should be proximal enough to keep it out of the venipuncture site. Select an appropriate vein for cannulation. Engorged veins are soft and feel spongy. Make sure that the structure you are palpating is not a tendon, which feels hard and rigid. If possible, select a vein that is straight and does not overlie a joint. In this demonstration, the cephalic vein, proximal to the elbow, was chosen. Cleanse the overlying skin with a skin cleansing agent such as chlorhexidine or povidone iodine. Do not repalpate the vein after skin preparation. You may consider the use of local anesthesia, which has been shown to reduce the perceived pain of intravenous cannulation without adversely affecting success rates. A small wheel of 1% lidocaine without epinephrine is placed over the needle entry site. Do not inject excessive amounts of anesthetic, which may distort the anatomy and make the procedure difficult. Apply traction distal to the vein with the thumb of your non-dominant hand to prevent the vein from rolling during cannulation. Place the thumb distally enough so that it does not interfere with the proper angle of needle entry. Avoid placing too much traction on the vein, which may flatten it and make the procedure difficult. Hold the intravenous catheter at the level of the flash chamber between the thumb and the middle finger of your dominant hand. You will use your index finger to advance the catheter over the needle and into the vessel. The bevel of the needle should be facing upwards. For superficial and small vessels, the angle of entry will often be 15 degrees or less. Steeper angles of entry may be required for deeper or larger vessels. While maintaining traction, Gently, yet relatively quickly, insert the needle into the vessel. Observe for a return of blood in the flash chamber and stop advancement immediately once it is noted. If no blood is seen in the chamber, correct intraluminal positioning of the catheter is highly unlikely and a second attempt should be made. If you do not obtain a flash of blood on the initial catheter advancement, the needle needs to be repositioned. Gently withdraw the entire catheter assembly so that just the tip of the needle remains under the epidermis. Change the angle of entry by a slight amount and then readvance the catheter. The needle should not be repositioned while it is fully inserted, as doing so may injure the vessel or other structures. Lower the angle of the needle to less than 15 degrees so that the catheter is as parallel to the vessel as possible. Then, advance the entire catheter assembly 1 to 2 millimeters to assure that the catheter tip, as well as the needle tip, is in the vessel lumen. Use the index finger of your dominant hand to advance the catheter over the needle and into the vessel, 
do not advance the needle along with the catheter, as this may lead to puncture of the back wall of the vein and subsequent infiltration. Be sure to maintain traction on the vessel with your non-dominant hand during catheter advancement. Releasing the traction too early may cause the vein to move, resulting in unsuccessful venipuncture. Once the catheter is fully advanced, release the traction and use your non-dominant hand to apply tamponade to the vessel by pressing down firmly in the region of the tip of the catheter. This prevents spillage of blood when the needle is removed. Next, remove the needle from the catheter and activate the safety mechanism. Attach the tubing to the catheter hub. In this demonstration, a section of extension tubing is used. It is also possible to directly connect the intravenous tubing to the hub. Be familiar with the standard practices at your institution. If phlebotomy is required, attach a vacutainer holder directly to the tubing and then insert the required vacuum tubes into the holder. Blood flow will stop spontaneously when the tubes are full. Once phlebotomy is complete, release the tourniquet and remove the vacutainer holder from the tubing. Cover the insertion site with a sterile, transparent dressing or sterile gauze. Secure the catheter and the tubing to the patient with tape. A loop should be incorporated into the tubing to prevent accidental removal of the catheter if tension is placed on the line. Finally, flush the line with normal saline. The line should flush easily, without resistance. The IV tubing can then be attached to the extension tubing. Adjust the wheel clamp on the tubing to maintain the desired rate of intravenous infusion. Dispose of all sharps in appropriate biohazard containers at the end of the procedure. Several techniques may be used to encourage venous engorgement in patients with difficult-to-find veins. First, place the extremity in a dependent position to facilitate venous pooling. Repetitive contraction and relaxation of the fist may be useful, as can gentle flicking of the vein. Vasodilating maneuvers, such as applying a 2cm strip of nitroglycerin paste over the vein for two minutes prior to the vena puncture, or wrapping the extremity in a warm compress can also be used. Finally, a blood pressure cuff may be used instead of a tourniquet. The cuff should be inflated to a value just below the diastolic pressure.